When you look at the religion of the Mayan civilization, you see a version of naturalism and polytheism that resembles the religions of cultures that came before them, like the Olmecs. That same connectivity can be seen in other religions. For example, it's relatively well known that the Roman Republic borrowed a large portion of their gods from the Greeks. The Greek god Zeus became Jupiter, Poseidon became Neptune, Aphrodite became Venus, and so on. And the Greek gods, in all likelihood, were derived from other cultures, like Egypt, or from other naturalistic or polytheistic sources. Of all world religions, past or present, none of them were original ideas. All were based on various versions of spirituality that came before them. Zoroastrianism and Buddhism were born out of early Hinduism, which was born out of previous naturalistic and polytheistic belief systems. Shinto, though perhaps influenced by other religions, is primarily the refinement of earlier polytheism and naturalism. As these religions and gods hopped from civilization to civilization, they took on new attributes. The Roman god Jupiter predates the introduction of Zeus to Rome. Unlike the Greek Zeus, who delegated war to the god Ares, Jupiter was the primary god of Roman warfare. Though later, Jupiter took on many of the traits of the Greek Zeus, Jupiter also retained the attributes of the original Roman god. Zeus and Jupiter, though very similar, were essentially different gods. Islam is a derivative of primarily Judaism, and to a lesser extent, Christianity. Of course, there were other influences, like Zoroastrianism, which at the time was perhaps the most organized competition that Islam had. Some of the earliest battles fought between the Islamic Arabs and their neighbors were fought against the Sassanid Empire, a pre-Islamic Persian Empire. The dominant religion of this empire was Zoroastrianism. As well as the influence from other religions, it must be said that no religion is completely devoid of its own culture. While the ideas may not have been their own, all the collected ideas that eventually make up Islam were filtered through the culture of Muhammad, the Arabs, and the early Muslims. As much as Judaism would influence the creation of Islam, the expansion of Islam would bring about the proliferation of Arab culture. Christianity, like Islam, is primarily a derivative of Judaism. However, unlike Islam, the period of history and physical location in which Christianity is born is influenced by several cultures and religions. All of the New Testament, unlike the Old Testament, was written in Greek. Certainly, this would be an indication that the New Testament writers were educated in the Greek language and likely educated in Greek philosophy and history. And Palestine itself was dominated by two Greek dynasties, the Ptolemaic and Seleucid dynasties, from around 330 to around 63 BCE. And during this period of time, the Greeks were reaping the benefits of their previous epoch in history, the Golden Age of Greece. Though certainly as xenophobic as any ancient culture, the Greeks valued foreign knowledge, even perhaps more than their own. Around 300 BCE, the Greeks built the Library of Alexandria in Ptolemaic Egypt. The Seleucid Empire, which dominated parts of Palestine and points north, stretching to the Indus River Valley, was quick to adopt parts of Zoroastrianism into its own religion. Mithra, essentially an angel in Zoroastrianism, became a key figure in the Seleucid Empire. Though the connections aren't fully understood, the idea of Mithra and the subsequent Mithras cults would be a major force in early Rome. It's believed that Constantine himself, the Roman emperor that made Christianity the Roman state religion, had living relatives which followed the Mithras cults. Many of the early Christian churches were built over sites that were earlier locations of Mithraeum, and it's believed that some holidays and traditions of Christianity were derived from the cult of Mithras. While this Mithras religion was fairly strong, particularly in the Roman military, Zoroastrianism was still a powerful force in the region, and it had been since around 550 BCE. Magi, or Magus, appears at least three times in the New Testament, twice in Acts, and once in Matthew. Later mistranslated as magician or sorcerer, the term Magus is only known to describe one particular tribe of Zoroastrians. The Magi were members of a tribe of Zoroastrian priests learned in astrology. Matthew 2 verses 1 and 2 states, 
After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. The book of Matthew acknowledges not only the existence of the Magi, but that this event could be foretold by a Zoroastrian understanding of astrology and prophecy. This is a fairly important acknowledgement and shows that the Zoroastrian priests were still well-known, respected, and powerful in this region. It also acknowledges the value of Zoroastrian prophecy and astrological knowledge. Acts 13 verses 6 through 11 states, now when they had gone through the island to Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew, whose name was Bar-Jesus, who was with the proconsul Sergius Paulus, an intelligent man. This man called for Barnabas and Saul and sought to hear the word of God. But Elimus, the sorcerer, for so his name is translated, withstood them, seeking to turn the proconsul away from the faith. In this passage, in the original Greek, Elimus is a Magi. Clearly, while the Magi were people to be revered by early Christians, they also had the capacity to turn people away from Christianity. Oddly, this is very similar to the reaction of early Islam to Zoroastrianism. Like Islam 600 years later, early Christianity looked at Zoroastrianism with both a certain amount of respect, tempered by a certain amount of concern. Whatever the origins, the Christian God with its doctrine of love and kindness its three-part figurehead, its views of hell, Satan, and apocalypse, would be substantially different from the single, vengeful, destructive God which speaks of no discernible afterlife that personally favored Judaism. Just like Jupiter when Rome came into contact with Greece, the Christian God would appear to be somewhat connected to Judaism while exhibiting very different traits.